Welcome to the Art of Change podcast, where we take a look at the latest news and events happening throughout the Arts Division at UC Santa Cruz. I'm your host, Maureen Dixon Harrison, and I'm the Assistant Director of Communications and Marketing here at UC Santa Cruz's Arts Division. In this episode, I'm thrilled to be talking with drama lecturer Don Williams, who founded the African American Theater Arts Troupe on the UC Santa Cruz campus in 1991. ATAP, as it's often called, has had a profound and lasting effect on countless numbers of African American students throughout the years. And Mr. Williams' tireless work and dedication have inspired so many. In 1993, Mr. Williams also founded the Rainbow Theater in order to give students from various diverse backgrounds the opportunity to experience and create multicultural productions. I hope you'll enjoy this very thought-provoking and dynamic conversation. Thanks so much for joining us. So how did your love for theater begin? What a great question. <laughs> well, I can tell you right now, um, the first love of theater actually happened when I was a little kid coming up uh, in Michigan. Oh. Um, I come from a family of 10, so we had a lot of talent within our family. Mm. And the real truth of the story is that uh, in the summertime, we'd get these thunderstorms and the lights would go out. And so we would actually entertain ourselves in the house because we had no TV, no radio. And uh, we would do uh, little, little, little mimes and stage scripts and things of that nature. And so that's where it started out, where I was, uh, I was a funny person. I was pretty funny. <laughs> ATAT is what we call a, a real beacon of exploring black history. And I say that in terms of the depth and breadth that it can do from the different playwrights that we select. Mm -hmm. You know, for a given example, if we home in on August Wilson, who folks who are really in tune to black theater and theater period, you'll know that he's a major icon of playwrights. He's had several shows that made it to Broadway. Um, he had a major director who was actually uh, the dean of Yale, you know, uh, university, uh, who used to direct his plays. Um, but the magnitude of his writing, um, some compare it with Shakespeare, mm. uh, because his characters are full on and, and they go deep into the culture or to that particular time period. Um, so, He's a true essence of giving real reflection of various times uh, African Americans lived uh, here in America, you know, because he's noted to write about the 1910s, uh, the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, which each of his plays. Um, and it really gives a greater understanding and appreciation uh, to the students and alike the audience that actually come out to see and view these shows, because it gives you a snippet or a snapshot of um, real life history and in, 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 in terms of it being done on a stage. And you know, the, the essence of theater itself, it's like you're peeking through the walls of someone's home. You know, they don't see you, but you see them. You have the selective vision of watching the character's reaction or act, you know, in that very moment. And uh, you develop these impressions of, of, of understanding of how people actually deal with one another and how they deal with themselves. And then you also are able to interpret the storyline. You know, what is really going on in this picture? What is this tug of war really about? Um, what is the frustration? What is the joys? What is the pain uh, that these, this family or this individual is going through? You know, it puts you in a different perspective where you can say, aha, I see things a little differently now because you know i'm seeing it for what it is you know i'm not being judgmental i'm in a relaxed state of mind where i can actually take it in now mm -hmm. and digest it and understand and maybe even have a, a, a the anxiety that i did have is gone now because it's a theater piece 
you know, and it's right there before me. At least I can think about it and, 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 and tug at it a little bit more so within my own mind now. Mm-hmm. So I appreciate it more. And the same thing with our students mm-hmm. who get involved. It's a, a major light switch for them of like, whoa, I feel like I am really connected to this world now. I have a little bit more understanding of history of who I am as the individual now. Mm-hmm. And that's the biggest thing that every student that comes on our campus seeks to find. How do I understand myself? Who am I? What am I really to do with my life? Mm-hmm. And theater has the ability to connect the dots for you because it makes you examine yourself. It makes you step outside of your self comfort zone because now you have to interact and work with a variety of people. You are not the star of the show, but there's a multitude of people that bring that show together. And, and that's more than the director and more than the stage manager. You got your lights, you got your sound, you got your publicity. You got all these factors that really create the overall overarching effect of that show. And um, I think that's the key essentials of what students really get out of it mm-hmm. and why I do it. Um, I know it's a bigger vehicle of teaching than me standing in a classroom um, because there's a, a multitude of people that can come night after night and view what you've put together mm-hmm. in a group setting to entertain, energize, mentor, train, develop a greater appreciation, understanding of Black life. Why aren't there more Black students attending UC Santa Cruz? I, I think it's multiple reasons. Um, a couple of the major reasons why they're not here. Um, there is the economic issue that goes on mm-hmm. in the Black world. Um, when we, when I examine and, and just know from cousins and uncles and being in LA for seven, eight years and just being involved with school even back then, um, I quickly noticed that, you know, economics just plays a big part on African Americans matriculating in our higher educational institutions. I know there's a better percentage of, uh, students that will actually go to HBCU Mm -hmm. um, and that's mainly because of the uh, connection of of embracement of community and your culture Um, you know because there you're going to see a reflection of yourself uh, in the administration in the teaching in the coaching and just the regular staff jobs across campus and that's nurturing you know for a student to be able to uh, uh, stay motivated and, and matriculate, you know, in the, in the school system. Um, and we know it's no joke that Santa Cruz is a very, very expensive place to live. If you don't ca- have campus housing, you're in trouble, yeah. especially if you are an African-American student because housing is extremely hard to find. Mm-hmm. And if I got 10 people knocking on my door and want to rent, you know, a room for me, you know, I got the pick. I can have student that looks just like me mm-hmm. uh, they can come in in my and in, in stay in my home and i think bottom line more people are more comfortable of having a culture that looks like them coming into their home because there's that mindset you know we got similar tastes or similar desires of how we live mm-hmm. you know and not really knowing but that would be the thing i think that um the fact that we do not have a, a, a strong presence of faculty and uh, staff that people makes African Americans pump the brake a little bit too, you know, because my reflection is not there. Right. Uh, and I have to work hard to, to, to find it and work harder uh, to maintain it. Um, and I think that it has, you know, a lot to do with it as well. I do know that, you know, since the conception of ATAD, and I'm just being totally honest, you know, I, papers after papers after papers, year after year, 
because every time they're involved with a production and it's a five, seven page mm -hmm. page paper they have to write mm -hmm. about their experience of being an ATAT, you know, besides the evaluation that they do, that you'll see the same mirror of reflection of how they felt connected, felt like there was a family, felt supported. Um, they had an urgency or a sense of belonging now where people kind of recognize them even more so on campus uh, at the bus stops. I saw you in that show. Come on, it's raining. Get in. I'll get you to your next class. Um, the buses are running behind, you know, and I hear that all the time. It's like, oh, and that would make the switch flip for anybody. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm appreciated and I'm, I'm thought about. You know, I'm more than just a student now. You know, I am somebody. I'm a person. Right. You know, and they, they're seeing me outside the color of my skin, you know, but they're seeing me as a valued member of this community. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that makes a huge difference of um, maintaining the, the few folks we do have. Right. At the same token, uh, if we can highlight it even more so, that will probably increase our numbers regardless of what their majors are. What do you think we can do to address this issue more aggressively on campus? That's a hard question for me to answer because there's um more communication has to happen and then I think there's an ear that we need to hear our young folks speak of how it really affects them. Mm -hmm. You know, well, they really need a platform to really speak and address and uh, us take the uh, the movement of of what they think that we should do, you know, to help correct that. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, when I was coming up, you know, it was different. You know, we're talking about different generations and different decades of, of folks. Um, and I think that, you know, people don't have the tolerance anymore. People are frustrated and they're tired, you know, of being treated less than. You know, we saw it this summer um, when we saw thousands and thousands of people that were out protesting and saying Black Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that was a huge change for America to see. I mean, this addressed the fact that there's only one African American theater arts troupe in all the UC systems. Yeah. And then we can tell you, even the HBUs, uh, uh, colleges, you know, they have theater, but having sustaining programs is not always the case because the funding is not there. Mm -hmm. They're going to have funding, it's going to go to the sciences and not so much to the arts. And we know that even in, in, in grade schools, one of the first things that gets cut is the arts whether it's dance, music, or theater. But we know it's the, it's the, it's the, it's the, um, it's the plumb line of, of life. It is our greatest connector. How do we embrace one another? How do we listen to one another? How do we learn to love and respect one another? We do it because there's similarities that we all can agree and, and, and touch and agree on. Mm -hmm. We all love music. It may the genre of music may be just a little bit different, but it's the music, and I can learn to appreciate your music, just like you can learn to appreciate mine. I like that dance move. Let me copy that. I'm gonna put yeah. that little swing in my in my dance move. And and we look for the commonalities, and we have so many. But it's the arts that actually puts the magnifying glass on that. It exposes it. These high school students that we, we see in Seaside, Santa Cruz, all throughout the Bay Area, you know, their lives gets transformed when they actually see live theater. And then they have an opportunity to talk back with the students because they realize that, oh, all you guys are not theater arts majors, you know, but you're science, you're biochem, you're math, you're history, um, you're women's studies, like, wow. And you're still doing that because that's a part of their love too, of who they are. Right. And I think that 
they do exceedingly better when they are able to touch upon the arts and so they're being taught a different lesson because we as parents like huh hey, that's the last thing i want you to do son is going to oh, yeah. the of, of theater <laughs> you will make no money you know it's like you know <laughs> flip a coin you might get a job in a film and you might not and then i think that our high school students they start to see that mm -hmm. students uh, and with my staffing that when we're going out and you know it's like hmm there are other things that I can do with myself and 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 that's what they start to see because one of the first things that we'll do is I'll, I have anywhere from 15 to 25 students that we're doing outreach mm -hmm. we go to them go down the line and, and say who they are and uh, their major and they say wow because they hear a variety of different majors and, that, and that's the, the the main ingredient of the African American theater arts troupe. Mm. It's just not locked in that we're theater, theater, theater. Right. No, but we are teachers of life, and through art, we're able to achieve even a higher discipline. So th that's just one of the many goals that we have um, in sustaining and making sure that ATAD is still functioning at every level possible. Um, I know that um, when we look at having the endowment of 100,000, you know, just the interest of that will at least generate um, five, six, seven thousand dollars $7,000, you know, if that, mm -hmm. something like that per year. And that takes the stress and the strain off of me or who's ever running the program. Um, they, they got to get out there and work hard, work hard, you know, every year where we know that students will be blessed um, by participating with the program. Just not forgetting, it's not even really so much about the money, it's about the embracing that you belong here yeah. um, and giving you the understanding of who you are and, 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 and folks who came before you who they are because there's a lot of these students that you know they're blessed by the alumni that come back and talk with them mm -hmm. and we bring them through and that's a hidden jewel that we have that folks don't realize but you know I have some I should say we have some hell of a alumni that have done some remarkable things yeah uh, from teaching to being in the arts uh, to being a part of politics, to being a part of uh, Fortune 500 companies, you know, connecting their T, uh, connecting, uh, crossing their T's and dotting yeah. their I's, um, and to bring them in and, and, and to talk with some of these students, it's a game changer for them. Like, mm -hmm. that's what I want to do. I couldn't quite put it together and wouldn't get it out of Mr. Williams, but I see it now because I, I, I was able to see this. I don't value or put all my eggs in a basket for the monetary gifts. Right. If I did that, I wouldn't be Don Williams. Keep in mind, when I started this theater troupe years ago, I worked for nothing. Mm -hmm. You didn't pay me. Yeah. It came from my heart and soul. Mm. And these students that jumped on the bandwagon, they didn't get units. It came from their heart and soul. Wow. So that's what it's built on. It's built on flesh and blood. It's built mm -hmm. on the real root of heart and soul. It has a solid foundation, a foundation that, you know, it, it, it would take a major earthquake to, to separate it. But even then, you wouldn't because you can't take away the memory. Right. And. So as far as us moving forward, we, we I think that we'll, we'll, we'll reach a higher goal in life as far as uh, having uh, monetary money coming in, mm -hmm. and building up that scholarship. It, and you know, every year we get different new donors that want to give to it. And I mm -hmm. hope that we continue to get that because that's what it takes to, right. you right. know, if, if we believe in investing back in our people and investing back in our communities that have been shaken, it's been, um, operating with the less than mode mentality, you know, pretty much all their lives. And we know, came here, LA, come here, Oakland, 
Right. Uh, we see the disadvantageness that's happening in those mm -hmm. public schools and, and, and how we have a shorter amount of uh, uh, folks of African-American descent coming to our schools. We need to continue to pull at the root of the problem. And the root of the problem, financial, makes mm -hmm. a difference. We lose students every year because financially they cannot afford it. And if we can set up and be a beacon to be able to catch that beforehand, right. um, that's great. And that's just the financial. Now, I'm not even talking about the emotional one now. I'm talking about yeah. there's a mental thing that goes on too of being deprived and being depressed and not having all your life and, 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 and no one seeing, seeing or hearing you. Mm -hmm. And so there's been a lot of folks that's throughout the years that got involved with the theater troupe because they were not heard, they were not seen. Mm. And this is the closest thing to therapy that you can get. What we have is, it's, it's not just your class. This is not a class. Right. ATAT is not a class. It does a production, right. but it's not built on just the production. Mm -hmm. It goes deeper than that. It is a lifeline. It is a, a beacon of, of, of giving people an understanding of, about themselves, about their histories, about a variety of different African-American playwrights and writers that came with, within them. ATAT um, is, 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 a, is a, a community project. It's a It's a, how do you say it? It's a family. It's a unit. Mm -hmm. It's a spirit. Mm -hmm. um, it's a, a pillar in our community here on this campus. Yeah. And there are alums who haven't been involved with it that will do everything they can to make sure that it's there, that it's here to stay because it changed their life. It gave them a bigger understanding and appreciation for black life. Right. Um, I mean, I got folks in the community to come up to me all the time. I can't even go into the grocery store. Mm -hmm. My kids say, Dad, you're like a local celebrity. I said, well, not really. I'm just, I'm just working. I'm just trying to do my best to, to serve the community and serve these students. That's what ATAD is. It's about commitment and follow through. Well, thank you so much, Don. You know, I could talk to you all day. But we'll wrap it up for now, but we'll we'll stay in touch. And um, I hope everybody donates to the endowment. That's yes. so important to keep it going. That's for the students. And um, that will really make a difference in their lives. So thank you for all your wonderful work, all the dedication, all the years, and what a difference you've made in so many lives and on campus. We really appreciate you and wish you the happiest birthday ever. <laughs> thank you so much. I appreciate you. I really do. Oh, thank you. Thank you for viewing the Art of Change video podcast. We look forward to having you join us for future episodes. If you'd like more information about the UC Santa Cruz Arts Division, please visit arts.ucsc.edu. See you next time.